Welcome to Rachel School Modeling. This is part four of the Trumpeter Yonkers GU 87A Stuka scale 1 to 24. In part three, I made up the wings and um, bonded the fuselage together. In part four, I'm carrying on work on the wings on the undercarriage and putting on the nose cone. So let's jump into this. So to begin with, um, there's a little machine gun that I've got to make up and it's uh, basically comprised of uh, foot wedge parts and uh, some pretty normal uh, plastic. So um, I'm painting the weapons magazine here and that's target is X10 gun metal. The foot wedge parts are quite small, there's only two. One has to be bent into position and it's rear forward on the sides. Um, once it comes off the sprue flat, the middle section just has to be twisted to a 90 degree angle and using a little bit of super glue it's placed right on the end of the gun barrel well on the, one of the ridges on the gun barrel and it's done. The second foot wedge part is the main gun sight so that goes in the middle of the barrel uh, again there's a little ridge that just fits into it and then you just hold this up to the camera you can about make them out. It's in the main magazine and it's just two half put together before placing underneath the gun. The gun itself is getting painted in Tamiya's XA56 metallic grey. That's for the, the bottom of the gun leading to the barrel. And the barrel is rebel aquacolor 91 steel. The top of the ammo box is rebel aquacolor 66 olive grey. And that just slots in above the ammo box itself. And that's all there is to the gun. It is a bit difficult to get this uh, gun in position. Um, I did have it in position, but I later decided to take it off because also I'd be turning the model upside down and it would just get uh, ripped off anyway. So it's, um, it was a better decision just to take it off. The canopy archway and supporting arch um, fits into the middle here. There's a couple of little recess points it just slots into, and um, if you just line up the, the curve, uh, of the bulkhead to this, it sh you shouldn't have any problem uh, fitting it. You will have to hold it for a couple of minutes until it bonds because it can't spring out. Next is the nose cone. Now, I had problems with this. Um, on the bulkhead there, um, I had to trim down all, all the um, location points and markings for it to get, get it absolutely smooth for it to fit. I'm not sure whether I placed them in wrong, but I don't think so because I placed them exactly where they all should be. Uh, but it still left me with some gapping issues. So I'm moving back over to the prop, just taking off the masking tape now and see how well the line is. It's slightly off centre to be honest with you, it sort of drips down a bit. But um, on the first glance, it, it looks alright. And the nose cone just fits over the props. You can glue this in place if you wish, but it's quite a tight fit, you don't really have to. That gives you an option to display it with it off um, at some point if you change your mind or you want to display it. Back to the front now, and it's all dry. So there is a, a little bit of a gap there, but not too much. Nothing that a little filler can sort out. Um, so again, I'm using my own filler here. So I'm just uh, placing it in between the gaps. Doesn't need a lot at all, and this filler will dry quite quickly. If I've got any excess, I'm just wiping it over with a kitchen towel. That um, helps uh, smear it into the gaps as well. And now it's dry, I'm just uh, giving it a, a sand down. So, um, like uh, all the sanding, um, we're starting with a uh, rough grit sandpaper and then moving down to um, lighter grits as I go along. So, as you can see there, I've got all my different sanding sticks there ready. And I'm just taking each one as it goes down in grade and uh, going over the same. And a quick wipe down once it's done. Uh, just a quick check to make sure it's all smooth. And there we are. And now putting on the um, wing flaps. They, they're all attached uh, by via brackets. But you, there's a uh, location point in them just to push them on first of all. Um, before uh, you put the brackets in. And then the brackets. Now, now the brackets are all different sizes I am running down the wing. So what I do is I take them all off the sprue, uh, line them up uh, to how I want them and how they're going to be going on and just put them on one by one. 
next to one is also for the guns. There's no actual markers on, on the wing for these. Um, so have a look at the instructions and see where the illustrations are um, before you put them on. There's then a framework it has to go on. I think these hold the weapons um, and plus the bombs. I'm not 100% sure. But um, it's one long piece, piece held by three um, upright brackets. I would put the brackets on first before putting the um, long piece in it. It's just easier to do it. If you pre assemble this part, it might be a little bit more trickier to get it into the actual location hopes that's provided for, for this part. So I've already done one side, this is the other side I'm putting in. And uh, they, they just fit in uh, onto the um, surface here, and there is a lot of location points for them to fit into the bracket. I'm going on to the wheels now, and the you, you don't really have to paint these if you don't want to, because you can't really see the um, inner workings of the wheels unless you tip the um, model upside down and really peer inside. I, I painted on with the matter of course, and uh, it was generally rather what I could call a 57 grey, but it's really not necessary to do it. Onto the actual wheel, it's uh, similar to the um, rear wheel, but this time it's uh, two caps and just pushed together, cemented, and then the whole unit is uh, pressed into the tire. The suspension uh, struts or uh, supports um, are come in two halves, so I am again like the rear, I placed one half on each side of the wheel, then cemented the top half of the uh, strut before springing it into position. To close it off. So there, I'm just swinging into position, and you don't need any clamps or whatever for this. It does um, hold itself quite well. But the main thing is to make sure the wheel moves. The inner assembly again is quite simple. There's uh, some uh, markings there for for you to uh, lay the different parts into it. I would recommend you building it um, this way because if you leave them out, even though you don't see them, you need that support for the weight to hold the plane. Um, the wheels may buckle otherwise because it is quite a, a, a weighty kit. So there's a lot of uh, pressure pushing down on these wheels. So for anything, just for the added support. So as you can see, I'm just putting this uh, glue down the channel there and fitting in the last piece. It's one of the easier undercarriages uh, I had to make up. So once both are uh, made up. It's just a simple case of uh, placing the other half of the house in on. And it went on quite simple. You may need a couple of clamps just to hold it in place. It's an awkward sort of shape. Um, so it's uh, wise just to put a couple of clamps in. Next is a couple of aerophones in the mid section of the undercarriage. Now, sometimes these can fall off um, when you're handling it. Uh, in fact, I actually had one fall off, which um, you'll see it later down the build that one's missing. I, I've got it, um, and I've actually put it on now, but um, you can put them on at the end, and it, you may be better to do so. So now it's to paint uh, more yellow, and I'm using this Mr. Hobby Base White 1000, and this is basically uh, a brushable undercoat that's going on. This is the tail tip on wing flap that's getting the undercoat here. I basically forgot to do it, but um, it needs to be uh, painted uh, under with an undercoat white before I put the yellow on, just to match the colour um, of the wing, as well as um, not having to put many, many different layers of yellow paint on. So Mr. Hobby's base white it is really good for this. So it's um, Rebel Aquacolor 310 Luthansa Yellow um, to match the wings. And as you can see, I'm using the same technique, um, very minimum amount of my brush, taking any excess off with the paper towel, and then just swallowing it on so it goes on smooth, um, barely touching the actual plastic itself. And um, this eliminates the brush stroke. As you go along. So as you can see there I've started painting the main colour on the underside and that's Tamiya's XF23 light blue. Um, you can use a masking tape uh, here to mark off your yellow in case you're um, 
frightened or worried that um, it's going to encroach onto the yellow. But if you've got a nice small flat brush and a steady hand, you, you don't really need to. Moving on to the um, real health and now, as you can see, I've already masked off. This is how the cam camouflage is going to look. Now, I, I've I've been debating for ages what colour I should do it, whether I should go for the box or um, a true colour. But, um, so I just had a look at what colour I thought went back together. So I used Rebel Hack Color 361 for the darker green. And that was time for the next colour. Um, before you use the masking tape, make sure that you varnish your, your colour that you've laid, laid down first of all, or it's a good chance that the masking tape will lift up the paint about once you take it off. So once it's masked, then you then Rebel Aquacolor 361 Olive Green. Yes, that's the same colour as the other, the green I've already put down. And the reason for this, I'm just painting it over the masking tape, and this will act as a barrier for when I put on my next colour. Um, so it stops any plain, uh, paint bleeds. Sometimes not 100%. If you do get any, it'll be tiny amount, very minimum. However, be aware though, it, you must wait until each um, layer is completely dry before going on to the next. So when you paint, uh, you do your varnish on your original layer of paint, 100% dry, mask and tape, paint your new layer of paint, 100% dry before you put on your new colour. That is very, very important. So back onto the main paint scheme now. As you can see, I've already uh, varnished uh, the eight the areas and started masking tape. So I'm masking the um, edges of the plane at the moment, um, where the wings are and where the paint is going to meet the undercarriage or underside of the plane. So doing the masking tape has uh, enabled me to allow enough time for the um, paint to dry. So I'm using Rebel Aquacolor 67 Greenish Grey. Now it's quite a contrast colour to the actual grey and also it's wor uh, worth noting that one's a silk colour and one's a matte colour. So you're going to have to, if you do it this way, you will have to address up the varnishes at the end. And once it's all dry, it's time to remove the masking tape, just gently peel it off. And um, this is where you'll find whether you've got any paint bleeds or, or not. I didn't, I didn't get any at all which was uh, really good, but that's not, not always the case. Uh, I should stress that as well. It's a nice little uh, technique, but sometimes it won't work. Um, you still have to make sure that your masking tape is, tape is firmly down. It's also worth pointing out when you're painting, don't paint up to the masking tape because you may lift it up. Paint on the masking tape down onto your surface. That way, you're not going to be lifting up the tape as you paint, and that will release, um, uh, stop um, having paint bleed as well. So anyway, on to the uh, main camouflage of the play. Um, as you can see here, I'm just masking it all out. I always work on the, the rule, there's no hard and fast way to uh, work these markings in. It's entirely up to the person who's building the kit. You use the instructions as a guide anyway. So I'm just going to start the painting of, of the main camouflage now. So I'm putting in the first cream, which is Rebel. Aquacolor 361 Olive Green. Well, I'm going to bring part 4 to a close. I uh, got a little bit more done than I thought I was going to. In part 5, I shall um, carry on with the uh, painting and uh, attaching the, the wheels and uh, getting on to the canopy. So, if you haven't done so already, why don't you uh, check out the channel, uh, see what else is on there, or indeed for the other parts of this build. Subscribe to the channel as well for um, updates, uh, particularly for this build and uh, any ones I have in the future. Hit that like button and of course leave a comment. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. Bye bye.